This video will go over the 11 biggest self-limiting beliefs stopping people from doubling their business. So if you suffer from any of these, maybe this video will help you break them or at a very minimum, bring awareness to the fact you have them. Awareness is always the first step. And if you remove any combination of these, you will make more money. I've been on two, three, four, five thousand sales calls in my life, closed between 2,000 and 3,000 clients. So I'm kind of in a unique position to, you know, speak on these self-limiting beliefs just because I've seen them so many times. If you go into the description, this video will be there, as well as 12 of my free trainings that you can download. So there's plenty of other self-limiting beliefs, but these are the ones that I hear the most. I help over 100 people every single day in my consulting program, and I'm taking between 25 and 50 sales calls per week personally. So I get these directly from the source. And it's not really what you might think. When you hear self-limiting beliefs, a lot of the time it's, you know, I'm not good enough or I'll never be successful. Those are very surface level, very basic. So I've centered this video around the self-limiting beliefs that I believe are a bit more under the surface that really, really hurt people. You can think of these as incorrect beliefs, even more so than self-limiting beliefs. And I guess incorrect thinking is self-limiting, but you get the point. A very good saying that I think applies to this concept is it's not what you know that hurts you, it's what you know for sure that just ain't so. Hits the nail on the head with these 11, so let's get right into it. Before we go, these can be costing you millions of dollars per year, so this might be an important video for you to watch. And I think that if you could remove, ev for every three of these self limiting beliefs you remove, you can double your business. That's a complete guess, but it seems it's anecdotal evidence from the long time that I have spent doing sales and consulting. So number one, the first self-limiting belief is convincing yourself you know how to do something when you don't. This is probably one of the worst self-limiting beliefs on the list, and it's so bad because convincing yourself you know how to do something when you don't prevents you from actually learning how to do it and succeeding. So examples of this are with cold email, with ads, etc. I know how to do cold email, you know, I know how to do ads. I know how to post great content. I know how to make great lead magnets. I know how to do whatever. But then you ask for the results and if you say you know how to do cold email but you've never gotten a client with cold email or you say you know how to run ads but you got one client and you know $10,000 of ad spend, you don't know how to do it. And thinking you do is going to prevent you from actually learning, getting the help you need if you need it and so on. And another version of this is, you know, I could just do this myself. Whenever you bring up something, I could just do it myself. I know how. Yeah, you could do it yourself. That's why you've been in a business for eight years and you haven't done it, right? There's a lot of this going on, especially if you do a lot of sales calls all the time. You just haven't gotten around to it. I've been in business eight years. I could do it myself, but, you know, I just haven't gotten to it. And that is one of the dumbest self-limiting beliefs that's going to hurt you and hold you back. The second one is that you don't have time to do whatever it is that you you need to do. Obviously, convincing yourself you don't have time to do something is not a great start to actually doing it. This is a very, very dumb belief for most people because the people who say they're the busiest are actually the least busy and they waste the most time. If you actually look over the shoulder for a day of someone who claims they're too busy, they, you're going to quickly see that they waste 80% of their day at a minimum. If you ask them about their schedule and you pressure them or push back even 5%, they quickly fold and say they do have the most time. And I've done this so many times, especially recently. It's the most bizarre thing in the world. And even if you don't have time and you're honest and you truly don't have time, you make the time. It's just what you do. There's always a price that has to be paid if you want to succeed at anything. And there's nothing stopping you from blocking off the first one hour, two hour, three hours of your day taking all your calls, meetings, and that kind of stuff in the afternoon, or maybe on a certain day of the week, or even making time to do what you need to do on the weekends. There's nothing stopping you except from you, your own self-limiting belief. The next self-limiting belief that I hear all the time is that, you know, something doesn't work, that X method doesn't work, that cold email doesn't work, that ads don't work, that, you know, whatever doesn't work. And if you went on Google and you searched how to get a client, for example, you would get hundreds, if not thousands of search results. And the thing is, they all work. It's just about what degree do they work for you? If something that doesn't work for you 
that is a client acquisition method or really anything, it should be viewed as feedback to indicate to you that you aren't doing it right and that you suck at it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody sucks at everything the first time they do it or the first 10 times they do it. Think back when you were a child and you were learning to walk. You know, Did you successfully walk your first time? No, you fell. Next time you got up, you probably fell again. Next time you probably fell 50 times before you got it right. And you know, not once did you think as a toddler, you know, maybe walking just isn't for me. But people do this every single day in every single area of business. And it's very strange, but it's very sad in a way. It's not something that's dumb. It's something that, you know, just is the incorrect way of viewing the world. And if you can really train yourself to think if something isn't working for me, it's because I suck at it and I'm not doing it right. You know, that doesn't feel very nice, but that's you know a great start to learning to do it right. So simply saying, you know, X doesn't work, it's not me, or my lack of skill or knowledge, it's that method just doesn't work. You prevent yourself from actually being able to make it work in the future. And that's why this self-limiting belief is so bad. The next one is that you can't handle any more clients or any more sales or something like that. This is, in my opinion, there's no greater killer or destroyer of previously or already successful businesses than this thought. So the idea that you can't handle any more clients right now or that you should not do any marketing or stop you know, getting leads is one of the worst thoughts that you could possibly have in business and it never ends well. If you know I can't handle any more clients has ever popped into your brain, just know that's the devil talking. That's not you. That's the devil in, you know, in those cartoons or those videos where he's on your shoulder. And view me as the angel on the other shoulder if this has ever happened to you, saying, no, no, that's definitely not a good idea. This one is so bad because it actually destroys businesses. The other ones on the list generally just kind of prevent you from growing and hold you back, but this one sends them to zero if you if it hits you hard enough. Think about it, you are feeling good, you have, you know, let's just use big round numbers. You're doing a million dollars per year in revenue and you're maxed out. And then you hire a bunch of people, you invest in X, Y, and Z, you upgrade all your stuff, you stop the marketing because you're at your capacity, the sales cycle goes by and you know clients churn but you're not doing any marketing. This is fine because you don't notice it for a while but 90 days, 120 days, maybe six months in the future, you know, a few clients have churned and you're not getting any, you know, clients coming back. Your revenue gets cut in half. You have to lay everybody off. And in most cases, that's going to crush your confidence so hard that you're, <laughs> you're probably going to quit. Leads, marketing, all of that kind of stuff go in cycles. And it's very dangerous because you don't see the effects of turning your marketing off and that kind of stuff until months in the future. So very bad self-limiting belief that actually destroys businesses. The fifth one is that you're too good to do, you know, whatever. So this one is a bit obvious, and this is more of an ego thing. A common one, because I hear this a lot, is I'm too good to do cold email or, you know, something of that variation, you know, or any other marketing tactic. This is one of the self-limiting beliefs that if I'm on a sales call with someone that, you know, says something like this, I really don't even try to address it or break it or overcome it because I don't want to deal with the type of people who actually think this. I just say, okay, whatever, next, you're not a good fit for our program. But it is one of the worst self-limiting beliefs. You are not too good to do anything. Better people than you do it and do it enthusiastically and successfully. And you really got to get this one out of your head. Whatever it is that you are have come up with the idea that you're too good to do, no one's too good to do anything. Trust me. The sixth one is kind of like the first one but a little bit different where the first one is i already know how to do x y and z this one is i already have done x y and z i already have this and this is an interesting one because a lot of people will convince themselves that they already have this set up or they already do that when they either don't which is a strange one but happens all the time or they do it very very poorly it's kind of like if you go to the gym, but you can only bench press, you know, the bar, 45 pounds, and you convince yourself, you know, you already know how to, 
you've been at the gym for six months and you can still only bench press 45 pounds. Like that is a indication that something is not going properly, but it happens all of the time in business. It's particularly sinister because if you already do cold email, for example, but you do it terribly and likely don't realize it, it's just kind of worse than not doing it at all and knowing nothing about it because if you think you do it, you think you know how to do it, you think you already have it in place, you're not really thinking about how I do it better, that kind of stuff. I hear this one a lot when onboarding people for 1000x leads. The amount of people who fill out their onboarding form and do their onboarding call and say that they already do X, Y, and Z, and then when you see into their business and they <laughs> either don't or it's just atrocious, it's kind of wild the, you know, how often that happens. The seventh one is that people in your niche are lazy, dumb, don't care about X, Y, and Z, you know, whatever. So this is just very incorrect and very poor thinking and is usually a reflection of themselves. You hear this a lot with certain things like, you know, let's do a very specific examples. Plumbers are all stupid and don't know how to do any of this marketing stuff anyways. Or lawyers are all too lazy or busy to do this. Or high level executives don't care about, you know, X, Y, and Z. They're never going to see a Facebook ad and go to a lead magnet and, you know, sign up for a webinar and open my email flows, that kind of stuff. Thinking your niche is lazy and dumb and doesn't care about anything is not a very good start if you're trying to build a successful business. And I've never heard anyone with a successful business ever say that their niche is stupid or dumb or lazy with the same conviction and 100% surety that a lot of beginners do. This is a very beginner self-limiting belief. And, you know, it is what it is, right? Maybe people are right. Maybe their niche doesn't actually care about sales or revenue or, you know, their livelihood or their family. And they're just too stupid to understand how the basic things work and too lazy to do even do two or three or five minute tasks. I, mean, I roll my eyes when I say this, but this is, if you do enough sales calls and you try to coach people or help people or do consulting, you're going to hear something like this on a daily basis and it's just plain wrong. The next one is that something won't work for my particular business or niche. So this is one I hear a crazy amount because I am doing a thousand X leads program right now and I do all these sales calls and you know answer all these messages and stuff. So I'm in the trenches with this self-limiting belief daily. Typically I ask people, you know, when they say something like this, like, you know, paid ads don't work for my particular niche or cold email doesn't work for my industry. People don't want to read those. I really ask them, do you know for a fact that not a single business in your industry or niche does, you know, paid ads or content or outreach or partnerships and not a single business in your niche has a newsletter or has ever done a webinar or has a community or hires SDRs? Like this is what I ask them. And you know, they quickly say, well, no, that's not true. Oh, they do then. Well, they're very nice. And that usually is enough to break this self limiting belief. It's not one that is, you know, very deep, I guess. But even the surface level ones, if you have no one like me to break them for you, or you never watched a video like this before, you can go your whole life with saying this kind of stuff. So if you suffer from a belief like this, something doesn't work for my business or industry, I want you to write down 10 pieces of evidence to support your claim, whatever your claim is, that it won't work for your industry. And if it's this is actually true, this is a fact, you should have no problem finding 10 pieces of evidence to support it. Could be, you know, your own stories, you know, videos, you know, blog posts, you know, X, Y, and Z. And the thing is, you will not be able to find 10 pieces of evidence because it's not true. The fundamentals, so the paid ads, the content, the outreach, the partnerships, lead magnets, email flows, conversion mechanisms, your website, sales processes, offers, etc., you know, are important and work for every single industry, in every single country, in every single language, in every single demographic on the planet. It's not a real thing. This is a classic self-limiting belief that's not true in any way, but people have it. So the number nine one is I need to hire, you know, X, Y, and Z to do whatever it is. And this is a crazy common and also crazy belief that you need to hire someone to do every little task. You need a new landing page? Oh, you got to hire a designer, a developer, a copywriter for that. You want to start doing email? Oh, you need a designer, copywriter, email strategist, etc. for that. 
you need to set up your Facebook ad account. Oh, you better ask someone in your network and put some feelers out on Fiverr to do that. You know, how about this? You do it yourself. You go to YouTube, you find a video, you copy what they're doing 20 minutes or less, and you learn how to do every single part of how your business works. This self-limiting belief costs a crazy amount of time, money, and lost opportunity. And the more you learn about your business, the more possibilities open up in your mind. This right here actually makes things take 20 times the amount of time that they could if you just did it yourself. You know, it's called Google, it's called YouTube. And 20 times might be, you know, an exaggeration on the low end. If you need to set up a Facebook pixel, for example, that takes 20 minutes of learning. If you need to find someone to do that for you, you know, 20 times 20 minutes would be 400 minutes. That's not even seven hours. But some people take weeks to do this because they don't just want to take the time to do it themselves. Very, very bad self limiting belief and easy to overcome. Just do it yourself. There's an idea. The tenth one is kind of what I, what I touched on earlier a little bit, but this is, you know, a standalone one as well. And my target market does not respond to marketing. There are two types of people who typically have this self-limiting belief. The first is beginners who have absolutely no idea what they're talking about, no clue what they're saying, and that's just the name of the game when you're first starting. But the second one is, you know, people who sell to C-suite level or Fortune 500 or enterprise clients. And this is a bizarre one because when you even apply 5% of pressure to the first person, you know, the people who say, you know, the beginner, and say things like, do you really believe no one in your target audience clicks on ads, looks at content, you know, responds to messages, etc.? They always say, well, no. So very easy to break the self-limiting belief. But the second type of person actually has an interesting concern, because this is the only self-limiting belief on this list that actually has some validity, validity to it. It's 50% valid, 50% self-limiting belief. And it's the only one on this list that's not just completely incorrect, like I said. The most common self-limiting belief from this type of person is somewhere along the lines of, you know, what type of CEO or executive is going to see a Facebook ad, click on an ad, download a lead magnet, or watch a YouTube video, or carve out 90 minutes in the middle of the day to view a webinar from a random person. Like I said, you know, <laughs> there are elements of this that are valid. But the other percent is just cope, it's just self-limiting beliefs. I've talked to six different CEOs doing over nine figures per year in revenue just from these YouTube videos, and I'm not famous. I don't have a ton of subscribers. I have a decent amount for a business channel, but nothing crazy. And three of those have actually joined 1,000x leads, and that's just one example. So yes, the stuff that you don't think is going to work actually does work. But let's talk about the valid part, because it might be true in some sense, and it's certainly 50% logical. So here's why you need to do marketing, even if your target audience is typically hard to reach executives. So this is a drawing of how the sales process works at these large companies, you know, Fortune 500 or just even enterprise or just even C-suite level busy executives. The boss will say something like, we need to hire someone to help us with our lead generation. They're going to tell their employees that their managers, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So what the marketing does even if the boss doesn't even see it, the employees are going to see it. They're looking to learn and progress their careers. They're going to click on your ads. They're going to watch your content, all of that kind of stuff. So when the boss or the executive or whoever's in charge of, you know, hiring at this company, they're going to kind of task their employees to do this and, you know, Matt has one of the best webinars I've ever seen. There's this lead generation newsletter I always read. We should reach out to Matt, who writes it. Matt has a ton of followers and a ton of reviews. I follow Matt. You know, we should hire Matt. It's about building internal champions. It's about building name recognition. It's about, you know, building relationships. Let's say there is a, an employee who's a, you know, Facebook ads manager at an e-commerce brand, and then they get hired away a year from now as a director of marketing, and they're the one who's actually in charge of hiring contractors and agencies now. Because you help them, or because they know about you from the past, now they have the power, now they're gonna hire you. It's all about this kind of stuff. So this belief is a lot of cope, a lot of self-limiting belief, but it is valid, and this is why you know you still have to do this stuff. So the last one is I shouldn't have to do any marketing to succeed. My results speak for themselves. 
and thinking that you don't have to do marketing is always fine until it isn't. A lot of people build a business, they off referrals off doing great work, and that works. It happens all the time, it happens every day, until something changes, whether that's market conditions, you know, more competition, worse macroeconomics, or whatever, and then they stop getting as many referrals, their pipeline dries up, and they have no way to fill it. So this is the self, the, this is the kind of self limiting belief that is a bit too arrogant for my li liking, and, you know, the ego is the thing that gets in the way. Fortune 500 companies spend billions of dollars of marketing per year, and a lot of people think that their results are too good and good enough to speak for themselves. The Fortune 500 company doesn't feel that way, and you shouldn't either. So if you have this self limiting belief, try it with that frame and see what conclusions you come to. You know, my is my stuff really that good that, you know, a Fortune 500 company who's been around for 100 years, you know, their stuff's not good enough to not do marketing. What does that say about me? So hopefully this video has removed some or multiple of your self-limiting beliefs. I did make this video with the intention to try and mock you a little bit if you suffer from these self-limiting beliefs. At the very least, I hope I give you something to think about. And I truly believe that for every three of these you remove, you really are on the path to doubling your business. And these self-limiting beliefs usually come in pairs, triplets, quadruplets, meaning you break one of them, you know, you often break another one and vice versa. If you have one of them, you often have similar ones. So when you remove one of these, you typically remove others almost automatically or by default. So it's very good use of your time. Watch this video over and over if you suffer from these and I'll see you in the next one.